to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you everyone for uh, being out on a wet night uh, to uh, join us in the um, Monday, September 15th, uh, Bryan City Council meeting. Uh, gentlemen, you've been presented with two sets of minutes for September 2nd and the 12th. Um, are there any addition corrections need to be made to those minutes? Well, hearing none, I will move to accept them as presented. I'll second. Dick Reed? Yes. Rick Hoopy? Yes. Dick Wright? Yes. He? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Okay, um, also now you, we have the clerk treasurer's report. So Pat, would you review that for us, please? Um, yes, you've been presented with the clerk treasurer's report for the month ending August 31st, 2014. Well, it looks like it balances. It's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. With that, I'll uh, make a motion to approve it. Second. Dick Wright? Yes. Key? Yes. Rick Coopy? Yes. Dick Reed? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Okay, next we have hearing a public concern. Again, that's uh, time set aside for anybody who wants to address council. It's not on the agenda, and I see no one, so we will continue. Um, now we have some employee status changes, or a, an employee status change in the attorney attorney's office. So, Rhonda? Yes, uh, Tanya Belts is uh, completing her first year of probation with my office. That's going to be completed September 30th, 2014. She has been a wonderful asset to our office, uh, has been very quick in, to learn new things, very articulate and very good with the public, and I'd ask that you would recommend her to be removed from probation to permanent status. Should we... Should we do all those together? Well, I just, I thought the other ones were all police business, right? Oh, okay. And I'd just do them together. Then, That's right? good. That's yeah. good. Okay, well, I'll do this, Tommy. I'll make a motion to approve this one for okay. Rhonda. Okay. Second. Dick Wright? Yes. Rick Hoopy? Yes. Dick Reed? Yes. Key? Yes. Tommy? <clears throat> yes. Uh, the next ones are within the police department, so. Uh, Chief Wilds, you, you want to uh, address those? Basically, these will be status changes. We want to welcome him. This is his first day on the job. He was sworn in at 8 o'clock this morning, so. Thank you. <laughs> <chance>. Pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> status. All right. Uh, the first uh, change request is uh, involving Officer Mario Rodriguez. Uh, he has been employed full-time with the Bryan Police Department uh, as of October 2nd, 2014. He will have completed his eight years of service with the police department. And uh, according to the contract between the City of Bryan and the Ohio Patrolman's Benevolent Association, uh, his wage is to be adjusted to $21.79 per hour per Article 31 compensation. Okay. Okay, go ahead and we'll just do all three of them okay. if you just want to just. Uh, the second request is uh, involving Jeff Arnold. As everybody knows, he just retired. He is asking to be appointed to the Bryan Police Department Reserve Unit, uh, effective today, September 15, 2014. And the uh, uh, compensation will be $1,000 if he completes the minimum 96 hours of service per year. Gotcha. Okay. That'll give us some more help at games and, and so forth. And he will also continue in his range there and work on our deer situation. So we get that. Okay. And the last change of request is uh, involving Paul Zwadney, uh, who has been reassigned. Uh, from the captain's position to patrol officer uh, on the road. This is effective September 15th, 2014. 
and in accordance with contract between the City of Bryan and the Ohio Patrolman's Benevolent Association, his wages should be adjusted to $24.14 per hour per Article 31 of the compensation. Okay. Gentlemen, you want to... Uh... I'll make a motion we approve them as they are. Okay. Second. Dick Reed? Yes. Keith? Yes. Rick Coopy? Yes. Dick Wright? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Next we have Alert 86. So, is, okay, Chief Siders is going to give that presentation. Thank you. Um, as a lot of you have probably heard, um, we have a new uh, warning system uh, in Williams County called Alert 86. And um, for those of you who still have landline phones um, at home, you were automatically registered uh, with Alert 86 based on your home phone. Now with that, you are only going to receive uh, tornado warnings, uh, any of the other options that are available on Alert 86, uh, you will not receive unless you go to the website and register. If you go to the cityofbryan.com website, our website for the city, and you scroll down on the left-hand side, you'll see the banner there that says Alert, and it's Alert 86 for Williams County. You click on it and you'll be redirected to the um, Alert 86 website, and unfortunately, I have to sign in to the um, Wi Fi here in the Don North building. So let's see if I can make this happen. Technical difficulties. There we go. Okay. So you're going to come to this website here. Um, this website, it is a basic one, two, three step uh, situation to register. Uh, just go down here and, and click, uh, or it says click here, and you'll be redirected one more time to where you get an opportunity to pick a username. And I'm going to keep it simple. So we're just going to walk through the process. Okay. And then it's going to ask you for your first name, your last name, and then it's going to ask you for a six character password or eight character. So I've done that. And then it's going to ask you to confirm that. And then it's going to ask you a security question in case for some reason you would forget your username or password. Um, it's going to ask you for a security and you get an opportunity to pick um, any one of the uh, security questions that you want and then you type in the answer and in the event that you um, forget your username or password um, it will ask you for it will give you the uh, question and then you have to apply Apply that answer. Let me fix this here real quick. And then it's going to ask you to um, put in a website or an email address. And then it asks you to accept the terms of use. And after you've done that, it doesn't like my password, I guess. Let's try that again. That's the biggest thing is to remember the password. Uh, yeah. Your old password. One of many. Yeah. There we go. Now we can create the account and we move forward. These things are particular. Now, at this point, it takes you to another page and it asks you, how do you want to be contacted? Um, and you can move these up and down 
as you want. So, you know, if you wanted your home phone to be first, you can click this all the way up to the top to where your home phone is first, and then you can add the number for your home phone. And then if you want a text message to come to your cell phone, again, you would just add that in. And if you want it to come to your cell phone, again, you do the same thing. If you want your email, and you get to go right down through the list. There's 10 options here. Um, if you want your, uh, if you have a second cell phone in your family, and you want that phone to um, be contacted as well, or multiple email addresses, you can list those um, here as well. If you want to be contacted at work, you can be contacted at work and you'll get a phone call uh, through work. Once you've selected all of those, then you just click save and continue. And then it's gonna ask you to add a location. And typically a lot of folks will do a home and then where their address is. And then it's going to ask you to verify the address. So again, you click the button, it brings up a map, and it puts a pin where it thinks you're located. Um, there's a couple of them here, that, a couple of options. I want the first one. And if it, none of them look right, you can click that button and it'll start all over again. So I'm going to select that one, and I'm going to say that this is my location. Now you can add multiple locations. So um, if you want another address somewhere else, um, you can add those um, addresses as well. Uh, in, another, in another town, uh, another state, you can add those addresses as well. Once you're done with that and you're happy with that, you save that and we move on to the next area. This is where you get an opportunity to select um, what alerts you want to receive and presently under the community alerts there are eight of them uh, we have uh, fire information alerts public meeting alerts so there's council meetings uh, bpa etc uh, power outages if you want to know whenever there's a power outage in the city uh, you can select that water outages uh, snow level emergencies traffic information or closures if the street department or if city engineers have to uh, shut down a street, you can get that information. Uh, public works alerts, uh, if our water goes bad, sort of thing. Uh, and then law enforcement alerts. So you have those opportunities to select any one of those. If you want all eight of them, just click at the top of the box where it says community alerts and it will automatically select all eight of those. Then under the weather hazards, you have a pretty good option here. Um, there's actually 22 winter weather options that you can have. Uh, you can have anything from blowing snow to sleet to winter storm watch, uh, weather advisory, fog advisory. Again, you have an opportunity to select those. I'm sorry? Thank you. I do all of them. You ought to do all of them. Yeah. All the time. We're phone will be ringing all the time. Well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, okay. um, and then for flood, there's six. Uh, if you want a flood warning or a flash flood uh, warning, you can select those again. Uh, for wind, there's only the one. If you want a high wind <coughs> warning, you can get a phone call for that or a text message. Severe thunderstorm warning. If you'll notice under severe weather, that tornado is already selected. You do not have the option to unselect that. That was part of the uh, deal when we put this together that this would be an automatic. So that one's already selected for you. You have the option though if you want thunderstorm watches, warnings, or advisories, or tornado watches, or <coughs> tornado advisories. So you can select what you want. If you make a mistake, you can select off of it. Uh, some other ones you can get for frost warning, uh, freeze warnings, heat warnings, wind chills, 
and then hail and lightning. Now, if you don't want to be bothered when you're sleeping, you can click this box over here that says weather and hazard alert setting. You can click the box and you can tell it what time you don't want to be bothered. So between, in this case, 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time, you will not be bothered. Your phone or your text uh, messages nor email will be sent any information in regards to weather alerts. If you don't mind being woke up at, uh, at uh, zero dark 30, then you can leave that off and it'll call you 24 hours a day with whatever you've got checked. Once you've completed that, you can save and continue. Oops, my session timed out. I took too long. Let's see. Okay. All right, once we've done that, um, there's another uh, thing that it's going to do, and it's going to ask you in regards to your information. If this happens to be if you're registering at a business, um, these are the businesses that are currently listed. Uh, we can change those and add more as time goes on. Um, if you have any uh, skills that might be of uh, help during a, a natural disaster or, or a major disaster, uh, you have an opportunity to select what's here. Um, again, if there's additional ones that we want to put in later on, we can. And if you have any special needs, uh, those will go here as well. Once you have those in place, you can click Save. And then it brings you to this page. This is actually your profile for Alert 86. And if you want to change any of this information at any time you can, uh, you simply have to log in with your username and password. Um, it will bring you to this page. And then at that point, let's say I wanted to change uh, some of my alert subscriptions. Um, I can go in there and I can select what I want. And then I can click Save, and now I've got all of those. So you can go in there at any time, and you can select what you want, deselect what you want. Um, once you get done with that, you click Save. And then once you're finished, you log out, and now your phone will ring for any one of those. So here's probably a page that you'll want to save in your favorites because this is how you get in and out of Alert 86. Um, we have cards that have been, uh, the county has uh, had made up and they're out there. And Chief, what's the phone number that's on that card? Uh, 419-633-5098. Okay. 419-633-5098. That is the phone number that will appear on your caller ID um, if you have caller ID on your on your phone. That's what will show up. Uh, there's also a, a text number that will show up for your texting. Uh, you can actually change that to uh, alert 86 and put that then in your contacts list uh, for text messages. So. <coughs> It's up and running. Um, we've already made some changes uh, to the weather uh, section. Those uh, initially all we had was just severe thunderstorm warning, tornado warning, but we've added a whole bunch more. It is up and running. Um, there have been some notifications. It's been more in the northern part of the county uh, when we had the, the last round of, of thunderstorms. We haven't had any alerts. Um, in the southern part of Williams County. We did have some flood warnings, but a lot of folks uh, didn't have that checked because we didn't originally have that um, on the list. So if you have been registered with Alert 86, go back in and, and check those uh, weather alert warnings and see if there's anything new that you want to um, be notified of. Well, that Every time there's an update or change, it will ring or notify you? No. For only... example, level three. Okay, level three snow emergency. If there's a change in that, 
uh, that can be sent out, yes, anytime okay. there's a change in the, in the uh, snow emergency levels. And if I heard you right, um, with this system, I could put in a location, even though they're not a member of the Alert 86 system, and they will still notify me if there's... They will notify you that, for example, like with you, sir, when, uh, for uh, <coughs> Four County, mm -hmm. uh, you can put that address in, and for like severe weather, for thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings, if, if that location ends up in the polygon, you will get a, a notification for that. Okay, thank you. If your name is in the phone book, if you have a regular landline, you're automatically in for tornado. Correct. But you're not That's automatically in for anything else. You still have to go in, register, and select the other items um, from the list. Do all those things ring at the same time if you've signed up for your cell phone and your your home phone? And Will they all ring or does one? It, it starts at the top of the list and works its way down. You have, there's another option that you can opt in for, and that is whether or not you want it to stop after it answers the first one. So let's say it calls home and you've got an answering machine. It does not accept the answering machine because when it calls, it asks for a prompt. You actually have to push a button on the phone to acknowledge the um, message. And at that point, if you acknowledge the message, it can stop. It won't ring your cell phone. It won't ring anything else. Now, if you don't check that box, then it'll continue to move on right on through, which is nice for folks um, that have multiple cell phones. Maybe the other phone is, is uh, one of the high school kids or, or somebody else in the family that it just keeps ringing right on down through so that the entire family gets notified at that point. Now the school is still separate. They still have their system going there. Correct. On that, yes. they, yeah, they're still on their Honeywell system, yes. Uh, there has been some discussion um, that possibly the school maybe will come back and will come on board with Alert 86 and then we'll have the school portion uh, along with this. So that's how easy it is, uh, how quick it is to get logged on and signed up. So if anybody has any questions about how to sign up, um, you can contact us at the, at the fire department. We'll be happy to, to walk you through it and get you signed up. You can also call uh, Williams County Central. Um, they'll help you get through it if, if you're having some problems. So you can call that 419-633-5098. Uh, that phone is not monitored all the time, uh, but they, it does have an answering machine on it, and somebody will get back to you and give you a call and help you get signed up. So that's how simple it is. I guess I'll open it up to any other questions. Now, the whole county is on this now, right? That is correct, sir. <clears throat> Okay. Thanks, Chief. Thank Thanks, you. Bruce. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is um, our August, I'm sorry, our October 6th meeting will be now at um, 530 due to the ready, set, relaxed night. I Maybe. set that at 530, uh, Mr. President. And I, do I understand, Rick, that you will not be at that meeting? I will not be able to make that meeting. So if, if any of you would want to start that sooner than 530, we could do that also. <clears throat> Past years we've gone at 530 and we try to get out so you can go on to the Ready, Set, Relax stuff that, that the school is sponsoring. So, But if you want it before, it makes me no difference. Uh, the people that are here working, does it make you a difference? I'd rather have it sooner. You'd rather have it sooner. They're, they're here. They're out at 4.30. <laughs> it's up to you folks. You're the ones with schedules. I'm over there. Mr. Wright, you would be I the think one. I'm the only one. I, you know, at this point, I don't know, but um, if you want to schedule 5 o'clock, I'll just make it work. Well, see that. We can just leave it at 5.30, and then uh, you can let us know, and then we can change it can't we or not let's let's go ahead and uh, would, if Rhonda'd rather do five o'clock's what you'd like Rhonda 
Yeah. Let's go ahead and set it at five o'clock, and I'll notify the mayor otherwise. But uh, at that far out, I should be able to adjust my schedules. Okay. Five o'clock. Okay. Um. All right. Well, the only thing else, or the remaining thing, is uh, executive session for acquisition of property and employment of personnel. So, I'll a go. Motion. For six. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll make that motion. Is that what he's saying about the yeah. five o'clock? Yeah. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Dick Wright. Yes. Key? Yes. Dick Coopy. Yes. Dick Reed. Yes. Tommy. Yes. There we go. Okay. I'll go around the. Uh, around the room, and um, Leroy, do you have anything for us? No, no. Okay. Okay. Chief, anything? Chief Files? Nothing? Okay. Chief Siders? Alrighty. Uh, you're not a chief, are you? Or you got, well, you have Indians with yeah. you. Have, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have anything for us, Mr. Engstrom? Okay. Mr. Hoopy? Nothing tonight? Okay. Mr. Wright. Nothing for me. Mr. Reed. Nothing. Mr. Reed. Nothing for me. Okay. Ms. Pat, do you have anything? No, sir. Ms. Rhonda. Yes, you have up on the agenda notice on October the 9th, 2014 at 530 in the New Era Auditorium is a community forum. This is something that the judges, probation departments, prosecutors, and other members <laughs> of the community have put together to educate the public on the dangers of opiate usage and other street drugs and as well to educate the parents uh, what to look for what signs to look for and so we just encourage everyone from the schools parents students uh, the public to please attend that community forum so that we can stop some of the problems that we've been having we're seeing several overdoses in williams county and we are trying to do anything we can to curb this problem the following day on October 10th is going to be a Street Smarts program. And there are actually two sessions the next day. It's the same presentation, a one in the morning and one in the afternoon, but it's a more intensive educational program to follow up this community forum. Thank you. Again, where's that held? The New Era. The New Era, okay. Okay, um, Mayor, do you have anything? Yeah, just a couple of things. We'll get it up here if it's working here. didn't come up. Uh, <laughs> November 1st is the, we're getting a lot of calls on that. When is trick or treat? Saturday, November 1st, 3 to 5 is our uh, McDonald Rough Ice Arena part of it. And then Saturday, November 1st, 2014 is the uh, 6 to 7 30 <laughs> is a trick or treat hour. So that is there. And what I was trying to pick up, it doesn't seem to want to come up is our garbage bags. Many of you have had an opportunity already for picking up your garbage bags. First of all, you should have gotten a card mailed from the treasurer's office that you're to go to the uh, street uh, department and pick up your garbage bags. And uh, there's two more chances to do that. Wednesday, September 17th from 3 to 7, and Wednesday, September 24th from 3 to 7. So you should have a card sign it, take it to the street department, and you get three uh, rolls of garbage bags. If you didn't get a card, come to the uh, clerk treasurer's office, get a card, and make sure you get those bags, because after that, there's, I think they're 1250 roll. So you want to make sure you get your, your garbage bags. And two, two more chances there to get that done. Also in your packet, I put a little letter to the uh, council that we'll be looking at next uh, time. Uh, the joint uh, EPA solid waste management district for Defiance, Fulton, Paulding, and Williams is ready to approve their five-year plan. And uh, it, already in the paper, there's a 30-day comment period on this uh, plan. And then a public hearing will be held on the 23rd on this plan. And then the uh, board will approve it on the 23rd. And then it has to go back to all the councils and trustees, everybody in the uh, four county area to approve the five year plan. Now, included in this plan is to collect a $2 per ton. They're calling it a designation fee. And this has already been passed July 28, 2014. Uh, by the EPA and for the solid waste 
district, and that will start October 1st. We'll be starting to collect that uh, two dollars a per ton fee that uh, is automatically set to make sure that our waste, solid waste, is going to hold steady, and and that the um, landfill is going to hold steady with the amount of tonnage that we take out there. City of Bryan has not had a, any kind of refuge raises for eight years. I think it was in December 26, 206, we had to look at uh, uh, passing a little raise, uh, right raise. So at the next meeting, we're going to have to look at the tonnage we sent out there, see how close, that's an enterprise fund, how close we're running, and we're going to have to set what, we're going to have to offset, uh, not, I'm not saying $2, but we're going to have to off offset this tonnage fee at our next meeting decide what we want to do. So I know Lori is putting together and tie some, some figures on what it what it does cost us. And there's more than just the tonnage going out there. It's the increased gas cost and the increase of it and the lowering of everything we're recycling is costing the landfill to go up. So we've Fuel been cost. yes, we've been at fourteen dollars and eighteen fifty now since two oh six. So we might have to look at a little bump in there at the next meeting. So just wanted to draw that to your attention at this time. So that's all I have. Okay. Um, the only comment I want to make is in regards to this uh, presentation that uh, our attorney, Ms. Fisher, talked about is this uh, uh, at New Era, this uh, drug uh, awareness. Um, you know, I guess you always look at Bryan, Ohio, and it's not a Toledo or a Chicago or Detroit or something like that. So it's the same old thing. Ah, it doesn't it doesn't happen in in Bryan and things like that. But a couple of weeks ago, I experienced a um, in in my neighborhood a, an overdose, and it wasn't it wasn't a pretty sight. And uh, so I'm just saying that it's here, it's real, it's dangerous, and it's deadly. And um, so I think it, we need to be very aware and very conscious of what's going on in our own city. So I think this could be a very good uh, uh, presentation and uh, maybe open some eyes up to not only me, but a lot of people. So with that said, um, what we're going to do is just take a short recess and then we'll go into executive session. So thank you all for coming.